Senator Waters. President, and I too, with great pride, rise to speak to this very important report. And I am thrilled that more than 12 months on um, from the establishment of this inquiry, which I'm really pleased we, we did together as a chamber, that we've now produced a report and an interim report with some very weighty and substantial recommendations. I'm really pleased that um, the uh, Senate was able to come to a tripartisan agreement on the report. And whilst the recommendations are not as strong as the Greens would like, and we've made some suggestions for additional recommendations, I really look forward to the implementation of these recommendations, given that we've had the government, the opposition and the crossbench in the form of the Greens sign on to them. I want to um, start by thanking uh, the witnesses who gave their time and shared of themselves with great courage and bravery to this inquiry. And I echo, which is the um, uh, first time I've echoed the remarks of Senator Bernardi, but I echo his remarks in thanking the witnesses for sharing their deeply personal stories, which were, I agree, very harrowing and very eye-opening for us here in the Senate. To learn just how prevalent this scourge is um, was truly shocking. And to see that the issue is now finally coming out of the shadows and receiving the attention that it so desperately needs, both in the media and here in this place, has been really heartening. That's how we start to fix this problem. It's not by ignoring it or pretending it's, it's private people's business behind closed doors. It's by revealing the true extent of these horrific crimes that are being committed, mostly against women and their children, um, but of course against, against, sadly, one in three um, women. Uh, but this is how we start to deal with this issue, by bringing it out of the shadow. So I want to actually take the step of dedicating the Australian Greens' additional comments to Rosie Buddy, one of the strongest witnesses that we heard from and clearly one of the strongest women um, facing just horrific circumstances and managing throughout that to be a strong and powerful advocate for women facing um, this terrible scourge. So I would like to personally thank, and I'm sure I speak, and I think in fact everybody else has as well, personally thank Rosie for her courage in continuing in the face of true horror to be a powerful advocate to try to fix domestic violence and family violence. Now we know that this is in fact a national emergency and should be treated as one, and this is a crucial moment. Never before have we had such national attention focused on domestic violence. We've got to seize the momentum. Now, in the interim report, which I felt was very strong and which, sadly, the government members did not sign on to, we focused in on the funding cuts that had been made to frontline services, um, to homelessness programs, to community legal centres. Now, I'm very disappointed that after the, the 2014 budget that made those cuts, much of those were not reversed in the 2015 budget. Some of them were, and I commend the government for listening to the community um, in, in that regard, but those remaining funding cuts need to urgently be reversed. And so I take the opportunity in my additional comments for the Greens to reiterate the desperate need for those cuts to be reversed. There were cuts to the National Partnership Agreement on Homelessness, to community legal centres, um, to, to legal aid, to the Family Violence Prevention Legal Services. And um, indeed, there's still 44 million from new emergency accommodation, which needs to desperately be reversed. Uh, now, I'll go through briefly the additional recommendations that we've made. The first ones are, of course, those funding cuts, because we heard from um, women staffing those crisis lines saying that they can't actually answer all the calls that are made, and they really feared for the women who've taken the strong step of phoning. And then if you can't get through, well, what does that do to a woman who's seeking help? How far does that set her back? It may have taken an awful amount of courage to even pick up the phone in the first place. We've got to make sure all of those phone calls are answered. And likewise, when women arrive at crisis shelters, often with their kids, turning those women away should not be an option in this wealthy nation, in this day and age. We need to provide the funding for those services as a federal government working in partnership with the state government, not passing the buck saying this isn't our problem, we don't normally fund housing, but working together to make sure that no woman or child is ever turned away from that crisis accommodation service. <clears throat> now, we heard evidence about the gendered nature of this violence, and in fact, we heard that uh, gender inequality is driving much of the violence that we're now seeing wreaked upon our women and children. So, our first uh, recommendation is that the federal government lead a broad and far-reaching program of reform to achieve gender equality in this nation. 
Yes, we have an awfully long way to go, but we have begun some steps towards equality. We need to close the gender pay gap, we need to boost women's financial independence, and we need to address the deficit of women in leadership positions in both government and business. And of course, we need to share unpaid caring responsibilities more equally and encourage women into those non traditional industries. Um, some of our other specific recommendations went to the funding for respectful relationships programs in schools. Now, this is a commitment that's in the second um, national action plan um, to eliminate violence against women and their children, but we've not actually seen much follow through in terms of, of the money and in terms of including that in the national curriculum. Prevention is, of course, better than cure. That, that's you know, so obvious as to be trite. And if we don't address the um, attitudes and the behaviours that are being formed at that very early age, then we condemn ourselves to repeat these behaviours. Um, it is a wonderful opportunity to help kids learn about respectful relationships, about the, the role that they can play, about their own self-worth and, and self-determination. Um, that is the chance that we have to try to fix this problem once and for all. So that a clear focus on prevention needs to be taken. Instead of that being at the expense of frontline services, we need to grow the pie. We need to fund those frontline services as well, and that's why we've recommended that the um, federal government conduct a needs assessment of those state-staffed crisis lines, which are supplemented by one federal-staffed crisis line, to make sure that all of those calls can be answered. Now, we've made some extensive recommendations about funding. Um, particularly under the National Partnerships Agreement on Homelessness. Given that we know that those crisis centres are underfunded, they run on the smell of an oily rag, they're not able to help everyone that needs that help. And then what then after that initial crisis period? Women are, we, to, we, were, we were told in the inquiry women are being forced to choose between homelessness and violence. Now that is not okay. No one should have to make that choice. In this wealthy nation, we need to be able to provide not just that crisis accommodation, but in that post-crisis period, that affordable housing so that women and, can, and children can stay safe and remain safe and not be forced back into violent homes because they have nowhere else to live. We've talked about the need for dedicated specialist services um, for women and children with long-term funding. We've heard some reports of a worrying trend towards those specialist women services being subsumed into more uh, generalist practices that are larger but that are not specially focused on the needs of women and children escaping violence. That is a worrying trend and it means women and children won't be able to get the support that they need, the dedicated specialist support that they need. So we're urging the federal government to make sure that those specialist services remain um, funded with secure long-term funding. Um, now, we've also talked about the need to increase funding for legal services. The Productivity Commission, in fact, recommended a boost of $200 million um, for legal services, and we would love to see that provided by this federal government. There's a funding cliff in 2017 coming for community legal centres, and that urgently needs to be addressed. On law reform, we talked about the need for proper training for uh, magistrates, for judicial officers and even for family law report writers who um, I'm sure do their best at their work but don't currently receive specialist training to be able to detect and therefore to make appropriate recommendations about situations of family and domestic violence. And we heard that that has huge implications for the legal aid provision to those women and children um, in, to the effect that <coughs> pardon me, if they challenge those um, family law reports, they then lose their entitlement to legal aid, which effectively shuts them out of the justice system. That's not justice by anyone's uh, definition. So we urgently need to ensure that those judicial officers um, are, are properly trained. Now, the um, implementation of the National Domestic Violence Order Scheme is very welcome, but it's taken an awfully long time. It's been five years now. Um, it needs to urgently be implemented. And we um, remain of the view that the Commonwealth should act to give 10 days of paid domestic violence leave um, to all employees over which it has jurisdiction so that women and children uh, can attend those court appearances, they can attend appointments, they can find accommodation. And there was, we got somewhere towards that in the, in the majority report, but um, the Greens, and I believe we have the support of the opposition in this, are firmly of the view that the Commonwealth needs to act to actually deliver on that. <coughs> so I'd like to conclude my remarks by saying that when two women a year die at the hands of partner or, or former partners, 
Something has to be done. The ball's begun, but it's up to us to keep it rolling and to fix those funding cuts and stop this scourge once and for all. Thank you, Senator Waters.